Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's one hour of power. I want to start you guys off with something very powerful. First of all, this is the day that the Lord made. If you woke up alive, well, breathing, we must thank God. Some of us woke up with a little bit of pain. Thank God. Some of us woke up with uh, having to be corrected and disciplined. Thank God. Some of us woke up with, you know, one eye closed and one eye open. Thank God. Some of us woke up with, you know, a piece of hair on one side and a piece of hair on the other side. Thank God. We woke up today. Today is the day that God has made. We must rejoice and be glad in this day. We must appreciate God in everything. We cannot get focused on all of the wrong things and forget to appreciate our God. So on today, I want everyone to pray to appreciate the Lord today. Appreciate God on today. Let's see here. Let's start with Pastor. Let's appreciate God today. We're going to go around the, ho the house and we're all going to pray to say thank you to the Lord. Give God thanks for one thing in your life, no matter what that one thing is. It's okay. Just leave it there. And I think it's the fan that is uh, probably blowing it off. See you, buddy. Just leave it at that. It is the fan. I apologize, bud. Let's go around the room. Pastor, I think you're first. Let's go around the room and appreciate God today. Tell the Lord one thing you are grateful for on today. Let's talk about something more than that, sir. You, you love your eyes, your feet, your legs, your ears, your wife, where you live. Where you worship? All right. Well, let's say, let's talk about just one thing. What are you grateful for today? The activities of your limbs. Yes, sir. Activity of my limbs. Amen. My eyes. Being able to do things for myself at times, you know. There you go. That's uh, it. A beautiful wife. Amen. Um, just family, period, here. Amen. Hallelujah. What about you, Mother Sassy? Something that you're just really just want to say. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah for moving on. Not quitting. Oh my God, there's so many people that have quit. What about you? The strength to help others. All right, what about you, Mother Charles? I thank the Lord for being able to sit here with everybody that I love. Amen. For sitting around people that we love. Yeah. Because let me tell you, we could be in some enemy grounds. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, God yeah. has blessed us because we can be sitting around enemies. People that don't care anything about us. All right, come on, uh, Carmen Legs, you're next. Mm -hmm. For family, I thank also for the use of my brain the use of your brain mm -hmm. hallelujah because there is some people that have absolutely right. no use of their brain hallelujah well what about you uh, Nayeli what are you grateful for tell us one thing that you are thankful for something someone Something that you're grateful for. You gotta say one thing 
that you are grateful for. We'll come back to you, Pat, and I She said she thankful for being here. She's thankful for what? For being here. For being here. Hallelujah. She's grateful for being here with Beebster. You know, I love all my grandchildren. And uh, at times, you know, all of us, not just grandchildren, but my children. Oh, my God, I have corrected my kids. Where they're like, oh, my God, mother, you just... You're just so rude. But, you know, I have corrected them because you, you cannot live life without correction. If you do whatever you want to do in life, you will not go far in this world. I'm telling you. What about you, uh, Fat Daddy? What are you grateful for? It's one thing that you are grateful for, just one. Bug, just because you're laying down don't mean I'm not going to call on you. <laughs> so you might as well sit up. We'll come back to you, Jay. But you got to just speak on one thing you're grateful for. Come on, Bug. What are you grateful for? I mean, excuse me. Jay Lee, she does not want everybody to call her that, okay? Her name is Jay Lee. Jay Lee? Jay Lee Manning, what are you grateful for? Jay is grateful for his cousins. I'm going to tell you guys why that's such a grateful thing to have. Because they're the closest thing that we get to Jalen. Right. They're the closest thing that we get to Jalen. So all of us are grateful for all his children. I thank God that though my son was a young man, that he did have all these kids. Because he blessed us with a piece of him. And let me tell you, we all are searching for a piece of him. So I'm grateful for Naeli in Paris. I'm grateful for Amir. Grateful for Bean Beans. So grateful for Sweetie and even the new baby that's coming. Though they mamas give us a hard time sometimes. Shout out to Nisha because she's the only one that does not give me a hard time. But I'm so grateful that... I have an extension of my son all rolled up into six. I got six pieces of my child, and I'm so grateful for that. That's a good, good thing to be grateful for, Jay. What about you, Jay Lee? Say that one more time. You're grateful for your family? All right. I'm grateful for my parents. You're grateful for your parents? Amen. Amen. I want you all to know that I, too, am very grateful for Nisha as her mother. And then what's your what's your uh, stepdad's name one more time, Ferris? DeAndre. Who? DeAndre. DeAndre. I'm super grateful for him. Because he has stepped in and became just such a great father to these children. Even when Jalen was not around, when things was tough between them. Let me tell you all, it was so important to be grateful. All right, Jaylee. Oh, you said family, right? Okay, praise the Lord. All right, what about you, Mr. Carl? I'm Every day. Yes. What about every day? Tell me what, what about every day. You still go? Have a good day every day. Amen. Having Freedom good days. Because so many people, they don't wake up to have good days. So many people wake up to have bad days. And I, and I want you guys, I want to focus on this scripture for you guys. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6 if you want to go along with me. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6. And then, uh, what about you, Mr. Roy? What are you grateful for on today, sir? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said he's grateful for his mama. Lord, have mercy. And let me tell you, he's got a great relationship with her. He, you know what? Some of us, 
that don't have good relationships with our parents, our mothers, we need to literally just go to Mr. Roy and ask him what kind of advice can he give us about having a great relationship with our mothers. Because he is one person that I have seen, no matter what, he's got a great relationship with her. They call each other, they check on each other all the time. He doesn't call his mama mama, he calls her baby. I wonder why my son for the last two years called me baby. And I like to say he got it from Mr. Roy. Cause Jalen called me baby for the last two years of his life. He would call me baby. And I understand because he got that from Mr. Roy. He, Mr. Roy, what's up baby? What you doing? You okay over there? Just checking on you. And every day they talk multiple times a day. So for those of us that didn't even get the privilege to even do that with our own parents, man, some of us have some pretty good spiritual parents. Some of us have some good spiritual parents that are sitting just waiting for them to, you know, to call them and check on them and chit-chat with them. So I'd like to say that it is great to have a relationship with your spiritual parents. Even when you don't have your mom around, man, let me tell you something. There's nothing like God giving you back anything that the canker worm. Uh, I too am super grateful for my parents. I'm grateful for Chief, because Chief and I talk a thousand times in one day. She may ask me for some of everything, and I may have to say, okay, Chief, give me a second. I'll get it to you. But I'm super grateful to have her in my life. And I am immensely grateful that the canker worm, what he stole from me, God gave it back to me. I'm grateful to have a dad. Oh, let me tell you, I got the first, I got first seat, front row seat of what it looks like to have a father. I was a young girl when I lost my father and I didn't experience some of the father, th even the father correction, even the father, I'm going to beat you or I'm going to yell at you or I, I didn't experience any of that. And my calves was burning. My calves was hurting so bad from all the walking that we did in Malaysia. And my spiritual mother goes into the pharmacy and goes and picks out some muscle rub. So, I mean, I'm thinking I'm going home. I said, okay, Lord, I can rub my right calf. But Father, how am I going to do my left one? I didn't have to do either one. As I sat on the man of God's couch, Lord have mercy, tears flew, just was flowing down my face because he rubbed that cream on me. I've never felt the love of a father. He rubbed that cream on me. I didn't have to put that cream on myself. I didn't have to figure out. I didn't have muffin around to help me. I couldn't call on Mother Sassy because these are the two ladies that I really call on. I call on my bug sometimes when I need her help and tell her, bug, I need this bug. Fat Daddy, come over here. And, you know, I ask my grandchildren all the time for help too. But I'm so grateful that God gave me a father. And then the day that I was leaving, I was leaving to go home. I had no idea. I had two big, huge suitcases. Because of course I brought not just myself things, but I brought something for every one of my family members. And so as I had them two large suitcases, my papa said, okay, we can order a really nice, fancy truck, like the one you want to see. I said, yes, let's get that one, papa. I'm thinking I'm going on my own. I'm leaving. He came downstairs with me. He said, oh, no, you're not going by yourself. I'm going. I said, papa. Are you going with me 
Not only did he travel all the way to the airport with me, he helped me take out my luggage. He went to the ticket booth with me. He watched me and took videos of me going down the staircase to immigration, to the customs. He watched me go all the way in where I was not seen anymore and it took my papa so many hours to get home on the train that I was in San Francisco that was hours 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 children before he was able to get home but he figured out a way to get home and he said to me I'm just now getting home daughter I said oh my goodness papa it was a long time let me tell you and this is how you know and have gratitude for having family and having people in your lives though they may fuss at you they love you though they may correct you when love comes, they are right there. It's an action word. They're there in action to help you out. Some of us may not have the father. Some of us may have uh, Mother Sarah as a figure, pastor as a father figure, some friends, cousins, family members, fathers, people in your lives, friends, people that call you, people that check on you, your kids. Because I, I can only hear um, Miss Shirley, Mr. Roy's mama, also say, I'm grateful for my son. Not only does he love her, but she adores her son as well. Because they are definitely the best of friends. So I want to read this powerful scripture that God gave to me early this morning. As I was waking up, saying thank you for everything that I have. If we just take time in the morning, children of God, to thank him for everything we have, we won't be so whiny and complaining about everything we don't have. We won't focus and center our mind on things that we don't have, but we can focus on the wonderful things that we do have today. It says, children... Children, we are all children of God, okay? So children does not mean just when they're little or when you... Children means all of us, every one of us. As adults also, we are children of God. It says obey your parents. So us as adults, our earthly parents and our heavenly father... We call, the Bible says that he is Abba, Father. That means it's a personal thing. That's the Hebrew word for Father. And he personalizes that thing. Why? Because he wants us to be one with him. You ever been so close to someone that you could go and go tell them all your secrets, even some of your dark ones? So therefore, you should be able to go to God and tell him everything. Even your earthly parents as well. Don't count it strange, children. Even when you're young, when you're older, don't count it strange to be able to talk to your parents about everything. You know why? Because when you talk to them, they know best. And even if God didn't give you such great parents, guess what God did? He gave you some great earthly spiritual parents that you can talk to about anything. Look what it says. Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, Things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. And then it goes down to say, fathers, don't provoke your children to anger, 
by the way that you treat them. Rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Love is patient. Love is kind. Parents, you are to be patient and kind with your children. You can't scream at little Johnny 24-7. Little Johnny will not respond to you well. You can't cuss them and call them uh, bad, bad, terrible, wicked names that you used to be using when you was out in the world. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that, children of God. You cannot disrespect your children to the point where they are, where you're provoking them to anger. How do we provoke our children to anger? Well, there's no reason to scream, fuss, and yell at your children when they haven't done anything. Now, there is times where correction is in place. And so therefore, you, if you have to spank them, you do just that. If you have to, the Bible says the rod. The rod in the staff is the word of God, my children. The rod and the staff is not no big old huge big bar or or, or, or Mother Sassy's big old uh, this this uh this cane she got that's made out of real wood that will really hurt somebody. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's not the rod and the staff. The rod and the staff is the Bible, and the st the rod is the Bible, and the staff is God's spoken word that you have to use. So parents. I want to direct you to learn to discipline your children in God's way. The love and correction that comes from God. Because it says here, the discipline and instruction. What are some of the instructions? You're not allowed to steal. You're not allowed to cheat. You're not allowed to lie. You're not allowed to uh, have other gods before God. God is a jealous God. We're only to worship him. So these are the things that we that we know in the Bible that we got to teach our own children. You're not allowed to go all day long on your phone, parents. Get off of TikTok. Get off of Instagram. Get off all these social media sites. They're not, they're not parenting your kids. Stop giving your kids a telephone just so they can shut up. You're not allowed to do that. You are to get at the dining room table. And when your kids are eating, after you guys get done eating, stay there for a little while. Ask them, so little Johnny, what's up? How's things going? You are to talk with them. If they tell you something such as, you know, Mom, I don't know what's been coming over me, but you know, since I'm... In this teenage years, I'm getting all bothered and flustered about, you know, looking at little boys or looking at little girls. What is that feeling? You're not allowed to beat them and tell them, oh, well, get away from me. Go sit down. You better not be thinking about that or I'm going to beat you. You better not come home with no kids. You are to explain to them. You don't know? Go Google it. You Google everything else. Go Google the human body the anatomy of a body and how it works go google how women and men go through changes in their life they go through stages you're not allowed to beat your kids because your kids feel some type of way whenever they're feeling this way or that way but you are to explain to them you don't know what it looks like after you google go google how God explained things to us. Oh, don't think that sex isn't in the Bible because it is. Don't think that hormones are not in the Bible because they are. Don't think that love is not in the Bible because it is. Correction, understanding, wisdom, all these things are in the Bible. And where am I going here? That falls right into our... Discussion on part two. Get rid of the distractions. Do you know, parents, that we can get so distracted about things that we forget that our children are even at home? 
Parents, don't forget to go by your kid's room. Check on your children's rooms every now and then. Check in little Johnny's drawers. He might be making a bomb. Check, check on little Susie's private um, area where she keeps her makeup. She might be keeping a vibrator in there. Oh, oh, please, let's talk realness and stop sugar cooking things, yes. Quit shenanigizing parents into thinking that our, our mother, my little baby's an angel. But you got Susie Q and, 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 Johnny, and Johnny Lump Lump over here in the basement trying to figure out how they can plot and take over the world like Pinky in the Brain. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, or what is that other little thing, Three Stupid Dogs, where you're not even watching your children. That's why, parents, you cannot be distracted with social media, your baby daddy, your new little boo-boo thing. You're, you can't be distracted with your business so much that you forget about loving on your children. The world is falling today because parents are too distracted with other things except making number one priority, which is God and your children. Your children are to be prioritized. Mothers, please stop falling in love with all the wrong men and then you don't want your daughter to go right down the line with you. Teach your daughters how to be strong in the Lord. Fathers, quit bringing all these different women in your homes and then you want to know why little Johnny is in that room watching porn. And with that being said, we're going to go right into misunderstandings. How do we get distracted with misunderstandings? Parents, you're not allowed to go to bed in your own room and not go in there and see what's going on in your children's room before it's night-night time. You are to teach them the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are not allowed to get to the table and start eating your food, but then in public you want your little children to pray over their food just so that you can look good. You need to teach that stuff to them at home. Misunderstandings can come in such a wide range of situations and circumstances. Misunderstandings between husband and wife, between people, and with that being said, let's go first to uh, Philippians chapter 2. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to go to from verse 1 to verse 4. We are still in the NLT, the NLT version. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. All right. Let us know when you all get there. Philippians chapter 2. All right, Pastor. I think everybody's there. Are you there first? Verses 1 through 4. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 in the NLT. There, there. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Mm -hmm. Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then make me truly happy. Make me truly happy. By agreeing. By agreeing. Wholeheartedly uh -huh. with each other. With each other. Love one another. Loving one another. And working together. And working together. 
with one mind. With one mind. And purpose. And purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Be humble. Thinking of others. Thinking of others. As better than yourself. As better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own. Interest. Interest. Mm -hmm. But take an interest in others too. This is how you destroy misunderstandings. If if you have been given instructions to go do something and you just say, but mama, I did it. But they did their own thing. They didn't want to. Well, where is your compassion and where is your tender heart? Because look what it says. Be happy by agreeing. Get off that uh, stuff. And y'all, if y'all don't be quiet, I'm going to separate y'all. <coughs> now, here's my question that I have for everyone, for you all to think. Why is it that if someone else is getting in trouble, you say, I don't care. That's none of my business. I stay in my own lane. Let them get in trouble. That's not good. You are to help your brother or your sister in Christ. This is it's just for children to do. But if you see somebody falling by the wayside, hey, I noticed that you haven't been uh, coming to the prayer line or the Bible study group. Uh, everything okay? Why do you all feel like, uh-uh, I don't want to call them because I don't want to be a bother. But you never know. They may be waiting on a call. Amen. Especially as... You want your children to stick up with each other? You know, you ever seen parents that say, you better not let your sister get beat up. You better not let your brother just fall down. You better pick him up. You better grab your little sister by the hand. Why does parents do that? So that when we get adults, we can still look out for one another. We can still do the right things for one another. Because the scripture says, also, I love this part of the scripture. When it says that you, it says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. But you see where it says be humble? You know, humility is one of the most important attributes for you to possess when you deal with other people. You got to be humble. You can't think of just yourselves, but think of others. Amen. Look what it says. Don't look out just for your own interest, but look out for the interest of other people. <clears throat> Find out what they need sometimes. Amen. Don't get your income tax check and just keep it to yourself. But how about going to go help another family? Amen. Doesn't matter with what. But something, even when you don't have money, you got legs, you got your service. You know, there's many people that's out there that are elderly that cannot do the things that you can, such as sweeping, mopping, cleaning up, cleaning their bathrooms. They can't bend over like you can bend over. They can't sweep and mop like you can still sweep and mop. They can't put their tra they can't pull the trash out. Mm -hmm. Some of them can't pull the trash out to the street. Mm -hmm. So have you thought about going to look out for them? Because like I said, it doesn't just take money, but it also takes of your time. So this is how you destroy misunderstandings. All right, praise the Lord. Let's go to the next one here. That talks about focus on things and people that add value to your life. Oh God, this is how you stop the distractions. Because if you only focus in on Thadi and Wadi and freaking frack and trying to figure out how you can get like them or how you can uh, also be scheming and conniving and doing shenanigans and things with them, then what, what type of value are they adding to your life? And that's what you got to ask yourself. Who is it that's adding value to your life? What is it that's adding value to your life? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, everyone. 
Proverbs 3, verse 13 to 18. Yeah, go ahead. Proverbs 3, verses 13 to 18. Proverbs 3, verses 13 to 18. All right. One more time. Proverbs 3, verses 13 to 18. Focus on things and people that add value to your life. And you know what? Start with you. Learn to add value to your own life. Talk to yourself and ask yourself, what is it that I can do to add value to my own life? What are some of the things and the ways that I can pull up and do better? How can I focus more on God and the good things? Because the Bible says when you honor your parents, things will go well with you. So if you got to start with honoring your heavenly father by making sure you pray and you read your Bible, then start right there. If you got an S in your chest with your parents, go to God and talk to God and tell God, take this bitterness away from me so I will be focusing on the right things, such as learning to treat my parents good. Because most of the times our parents... They only did what they were able to do. Amen. Everybody there? We're there. All right. <laughs> Joyful is the person who finds wisdom. Wisdom. The one who gains understanding. Understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver. Uh-huh. And her wages are better than gold. Better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Yes. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left hand. Left. She will guide you down delightful Paths. Delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. All her ways. Wisdom is a tree, a tree. of life of to life. those yes. who embrace who her. Embrace her. Happy, are those Happy are those who hold who hold her tightly. Who hold her tightly. Let's break this down just a little bit. Wisdom and understanding is more profitable than anything else that you can put your hands on. Anything that's material, let it go. More than rubies, anything that, nothing that, that you desire, even your desires, the Bible says, is not better than gaining wisdom and understanding. Oh God, oh God, oh God. This is not in our notes, but let's go here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let's go, to, let's go to the book of Job. Let's go to the book of Job and let me show you all something really quickly. Here in the book of Job. Give me just a second. I'm fixing to pull it up. Ah, I don't know why God did this much though. We follow the Holy Spirit, y'all. Because this is going to teach you something really good. All right, let's go to Job chapter 28. Job chapter 28. And verse number 28, I believe. Let's go, let's go look at it. Job 28. Let's start at verse 27. Job 28. And stay here in your NLT. And read verse 27 and 28, Pastor. Job chapter 28. And read verse 27 and 28. 
Yeah. And it reads, then he saw wisdom. Uh huh. And evaluated it. And evaluated it. He set it in place. He set it in place. And examined it thoroughly. And examined it thoroughly. And this is what he says. And to all. this is what he said to all humanity. humanity. And this is God speaking to every single human being. The fear of the Lord is the true. The fear of the wisdom. Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil. To is forsake real, evil is real understanding. Is real understanding. So if you want to know what true wisdom is. Learn to respect and honor God. Because this fear is not fear of trembling. This fear is to honor and respect Him. How do we respect someone? We listen and obey them on what to do. We listen and obey them. We listen to them and we obey them. So we got to listen to God. We have to obey God. How do we do that? By doing what he told us to do. And what was that that I read? This The first scripture. Honor your mother and father. To honor someone is to hold them up here. And to look up to them and say, I value what you say to me. I understand that you're telling me to stay away from evil things. Because what does evil take us to? Some really bad, dark paths. Evilness can get you incarcerated. It can get you six feet under. It can get you to be carried by 12. It can also get you to hospitals. It can also get you into jails. And then evilness can also take over your entire mind, body, and soul. And some of us have so much evilness buried deep inside that it has started giving us all kind of health pains. Oh God. Mother! Oh my God, Mother, that's so strong. Stay away from evil things because you yourself, when you become evil, it won't be so easy to get out of it. All types of spirits are traveling, waiting. They're lurking. Do you not know that Peter said that the devil is like a roaring lion? He's lurking to see what he can devour. Devouring isn't just eating. Devouring is eating so tough that you can't even swallow. So here, the fear of the Lord is true wisdom. And to forsake evil, which means purposely stay away from evil. Now, now, you know that freaking frack is always going somewhere to go steal something. God knows you want some money. But doing that will not go well for you. How much do you love your race of people? Oh, let's go there for two seconds. Oh, my God, I got to close my eyes. How much do you love your own race? Because... Here in this world, we are judged not by who we are, but the race, the racial background that we possess. Mother, oh my God, that is so strong. People think that Africans, all they want to do is scam people. People think that Indians, all they want to do is be lazy and lay up in their house smelling like garlic and onions. Because they got such a strong smell. People think that Hispanics, all they want to do is work and go outside and drink beers 24-7. People think that Chinese people, they're always trying to be better than everyone else because they, they work hard and they also go to school all the time. And they think that they want to say that they're better than us. Oh, I got to go to my people. What do people think about the African-American race? Lazy, don't want to work, always laying up, can't wait to get a check. Trying to connive and scheme on something. 
I'm going to go to our Anglo-Saxons, our white Americans. They think they can't ever do anything wrong. This is the way that they label an entire race of people, children of God. So you are labeled by not you being an individual, but they think that kids that are wearing dreadlocks, all they want to do is be lazy and lay up somewhere and not do nothing. That's what they think about our children today. Oh, all you want to do is go and go rob and steal and sell drugs. But, but what about the, you know, white American children that got big old ear piercing? You know, what about all the tattooing? What are they doing? So we have to understand to stay away from anything evil, which is forsaking it. Get away from evil things and also get away from evil people. Here's how you'll know that you find someone that's evil. They don't ever want to do anything good. They're always thinking about plotting and scheming, trying to figure out a way to get over on somebody, on the system, or on some things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen to that. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. Empty out your memory bank every night. So that means you got to let go of junk. You got to let go of pain and hurt. You got to relinquish and release. Let anything that bothered you for that day, you got to let it go. Empty your memory bank. Let's go to John. John 14 and verse 27, everyone. John 14 and verse 27. John 14, John 14, verse 27, everyone. John 14, verse 27. Empty your memory bank every night. Let go of any, any junk. Let go of any shenanigans, y'all. We don't need to keep anything in our brain. We have to learn to release everything that is in our brain. Why is that? Because your brain is connected to your heart. Your brain is connected to your heart. What a man thinks in his heart, he shall become. John chapter 14, verse number 27. John chapter 14, verse number 27. The NLT version. New Living Translation. Let me know when you get there. John 14, verse 27, New Living Translation. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, please say something. John 14, verse 27. All right, let's go ahead and go to that, Pastor. I am leaving you with a gift. A gift? Who wants a gift? Who wants gifts? I love gifts. Me, 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 me. I love gifts. Okay, let's go. I'm leaving you with a gift. This is Jesus Christ speaking to all of us. Peace of mind and heart. Peace of mind and of heart. And the peace I give is a gift. And the peace I give is a gift. The world cannot give. The world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Please don't be troubled. Don't be afraid of anything. God is giving you a gift. And the gift is a peace of mind and of heart. So think about this. Reflection question. What is taken away 
your mind and your heart. What's taking away the, the peace? The peace that God is giving you in your mind and heart, what's taking it away? Think about it in your own mind. You don't have to answer out loud. After you, everybody got it? What does everybody have? What is taking their mind, their peace, and their mind and their heart? Everybody got it? Now grab it like this, everyone. Grab it like this and go. Do a thump. Thump it away. Know why? Because that's the thing that you need to get rid of so that you can have a peace of mind and heart, especially if it's people that's pissing you off. Oh, my goodness. Mother, you said the word piss off. Well, my grandmother used to say it's better for you to be pissed, pissed, pissed off than pissed on. Pissed on. <laughs> so guess what? Whatever is making your mind and your heart to not be at peace, Get rid of it. But mother, I love her so much. She's just so sweet, mother. You know, she, she fixes me food in the morning, mother. You know, when, I, when I'm feeling down, she just, she rubs me down, mother. Mother, mother, mother he gives me a, he gives me a, a foot rub. But does he call you every name in the book except the child of God when he's angry with you? Oh my God, oh my God. When he gets a little bit of flustered in his spirit and in his heart, is he trying to go upside your how, your head or is he trying to bust you in your eye? Or how about does he cuss you out so bad and disrespect you and she talks to you so bad that it makes you want to, girl, come here. <coughs> So, therefore, you got to ask yourself, whatever or whoever is taking the peace of mind and heart. But, Mother, what do I do? They live with me. You know, the greatest thing I learned in Papa's house. Let me show y'all what I learned. Good morning. How you doing this morning? Silence is golden. Silence is golden. I said, Papa, why is it so quiet in your home? We talk. But if there's nothing to say, then we be quiet. Why is that? Because you have to learn to be slow to speak. And then, when you do talk to somebody, they talk to each other. You don't hardly ever hear them being loud. They are disciplined. They are focused. Mama's doing her work. Papa's sitting down, meditating on the word, praying. Their daughter, she's at the computer table with her headphones. It's so quiet in their house. You hear the little fishes eat the little water from the fish tank. All you hear is bubbles. Even Leo, no, 
No, no, no. Her name is Bonita. She's not. It's not Leo. Her name is Bonita. Bonita is their pet rabbit. She makes more noise than they do. <laughs> After they speak to one another, they don't say anything else. When it's time to eat, they sit down at the table and eat. Mama fixes food. They all sit down. And when they talk to each other, hey, how you doing? You okay? Everything good with you? Yes, you are. Even their laugh is a whisper. That's the greatest thing I learned at Papa's house. You know why? Because when you're angry, what do we tend to do? We get loud and start barking like a little cat or a little dog. Whenever we get angry, we want to get vicious like the cat go. When we want to start arguing with each other, we get louder, louder, and louder, and louder. This is as much as my spiritual papa ever talks or ever says anything when he's up preaching. And that's how it should be with all of us. We need to learn how to use our inside voice. Amen. We need to learn how to be quiet. And we need to let God be the driving force of our actions and attitudes. This is how you take distractions away from you. If you learn to just be quiet and listen more than you speak, you'll get a whole lot done. You guys ever see me sometimes? I'll go to my office and I'll be in my office for hours. I'm quiet. I'm meditating. I'm thinking about Jesus. I'm thinking about what I'm going to teach. I'm thinking about what I'm going to cook. I'm thinking about how to please God. I'm thinking about maybe praying about our next move for the church. What we're going to do together as a family. I'm thinking about, okay, what, where do we go? What do we do? How do we get this? How do we get that accomplished? So some of these good ways to build good study habits is meditating on God's word. We got to learn to meditate on God's word, children. Build good study habits and learn to meditate on God's word. And I have one scripture for that. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 15. Yep, yep. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 15. Proverbs 18 and 15. Let us know when you get there, please, by saying something. Yeah, yeah. All right. And it reads, intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. Do you know that your ears is, you have two, one on each side. That means your ears should be opened up wider than your mouth. You notice that you only have one mouth but got two ears? It's because people that are intelligent, they're always ready to learn. And you can't learn by talking. You can only learn by listening. Set a schedule. Pick a time of day that works best for you. And add it to your calendar. Add it to your notes. Put it on your calendar on your phone. You can also set reminders. Also, sticky notes and motivational phrases. What are some of the motivational phrases? Oh, I love this one. Philippians 4 and 13. I live by that one. Especially when I'm in the kitchen. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Sometimes I can't open up stuff. Sometimes nobody's around. 
I can do it. It might take me a little bit longer, but I'm going to do it. And then when I can't just possibly do it, then guess what? I use Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. Hey, come here. I need your help. Open your mouth. Don't just sit in your home and think that you're supposed to work by yourselves. But open up your mouth and say, hey, I need some help down here. Create an environment. Ooh, I love this one. Choose a clean, consistent place to read. And avoid distractions. Turn that TV off. Put that phone on silent mode. Silent those notifications. You can put that phone on silent where you know that, you know, leave it on for mama and for anybody that may call you for an emergency. And please open your mouth and tell people. Between five and six, I'm meditating and reading my word. So unless it's direly important, please give me a break. Use a plan. Follow a reading plan too. Make a routine. Once you've established a routine, you can try to build on it. Don't break your routine. But mama, you had um, distracted me because you had um, told me that I needed to do um, uh, X, Y, and Z. Talk to me and say, between this time and that time, mama, I'm reading my word. So anything I could do for you, it'll be at other times. If you see me, most of the time I'm looking at you and I'm paying attention. I know when you read it. I know when you're meditating. I'm not going to bother you. I, hear, hear me, because I don't want to be bothered. So I'm not going to bother you in your own personal time with God. That's why you make a schedule. That's why you share your I love the way Tim shares his schedule with us. Because anything that we need out of Tim, especially me. Oh, man, I call Tim in 2.5 seconds. Tim, I need your help, son. Tim has become... Such a great resource for me, especially now, because my other kids, you know, my other children, they're busy doing other things. Uh, they're doing what they want to do or whatever. So once you make a routine, look what it says. Waking up 15 minutes earlier than you really want to, that'll help you set that schedule. Don't be so quick to be like, but... Mama, I got to be there at 9.30 and you wake up at 9. Especially if you need about an hour and a half to get yourself together. If you got to go to work, set you a 15 to 30 minute schedule before work so that you can talk to Jesus. So you can pray for the angels of the Lord to go ahead of you. Many people don't do that. That's why accidents and all kind of things happen to them. You must Pray before you leave out of your home. Direct your angel where you want your angel to go. And then, of course, pray. Some people like to start their quiet time with a gratitude prayer before they even read, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father, that my eyes are able to look at your words. Thank you, Father. That you've given me new grace and mercy every single day. Thank you, Father, that I have a mind and a heart that is set with peace, as your word says. Thank you, Father, that all things are working together for my good, as Romans 8 and 28 says. Thank you, Father, that I'm going to seek peace and I'm going to pursue peace, as Psalm 34 and 14 says. Thank you, Father, that Solomon, Songs of Solomon, verse 2 and chapter, I mean, chapter 2 and verse 10 says that you call me beautiful one. Thank you, Father, that you told me I must learn to forgive and forget, as Micah chapter 7, verse 18 tells me. Thank you, Father, that Psalm 1 says that I don't need to sit with the counsel of the wicked or the ungodly. Thank you, Father, that you said in the beginning was your word and your word was God and your word was with God. Thank you, Father, that in the beginning you created heaven and earth and you created me to be your treasured possession. Thank you, Father, that in Psalm chapter 51 you have said to me, created me a clean heart, Lord. Renew the righteous spirit within me. 
thank you, Father, that you have taught me in Psalm 119 and 105 that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But if you don't learn the word, if you don't go to your word ever, you will never be able to be like your spiritual mother that has memorized scriptures. Thank you, Father, that Psalm 19 and 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you for you're my Lord and my strength. You're my redeemer. Thank you, Father, that Psalm 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you, Father, that Psalm chapter 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. But you got to go to your word, children. you got to read. you got to meditate. you got to listen to Job, John, Luke, Mark, Ephesians, Galatians, First and Second Timothy. You gotta read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You gotta read Joshua and Ezekiel. You gotta read Romans. You have to read Philippians. You have to go in your word and read what the Bible says about your circumstance. This is how you stay away from all of the distractions that's in your life, children. And I'm going home with this one. You all give me just a minute. Go to Luke chapter 10, because it's story time. It's time for a story. We're going to finish off this um, chapter. Luke chapter 10. We're going to read from verse 38 to 42. I want to set the foundation a little bit here about this story. This is the story of Jesus going to visit Martha and Mary. Martha and Mary were the sisters of Lazarus, the man that Jesus raised from the dead. There were three siblings. They were also close friends with Jesus Christ. They lived in the town called Bethany, about two miles from Jerusalem. So they lived close by. Okay, it's kind of sort of like you know, we live close by the church. You know, some of us live right next door. Some of us live right around the corner. And please don't think that your presence should not be known. But you should present yourself to the house of God. You must be present to win children. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. And this is how you make the priorities, your priorities in line. This is how you get rid of distractions. Because there was some stuff going on between Martha and Mary. As we know what's about sibling rivalry. You know, now watch this. Sometimes you have such strong sibling rivalry. But then I sit up here and think, how are you going to hate somebody and invite them to the circus all at one time? Okay. Hallelujah. So, you know that she really don't hate you. She just, on the low low, has to act like she can't stand you. Oh, hallelujah. All right, let's go, children. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Yes. 6 p.m., and if you don't be good, you're not going. Hallelujah. Today. I read it. Yes, come on, Pastor. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to. Jay, please be quiet. Y'all learn to be quiet while service is going on. They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha. Welcome him into her home. Uh -huh. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, yes. listening to what he taught. Listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. Uh -huh. She came to Jesus and said, "Lord, 
Doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. All right. This is for everybody that comes to church. It's very distracting if they hear a bunch of noise in the background while they are trying to focus. So for those of you all that are talking, there's nothing wrong with talking about something that is said in the, in the chapter and asking a question, but don't be a bugaboo by being distracting and talking about everything else except the word, because today we're focusing on the word. So just as Martha, just as some of us get distracted, Martha and Mary also got, it was Martha that really got distracted. And her distraction came from her worrying about her sister and trying to figure out what she was doing. But mama, she won't come in here and help me. Look, she's just sitting down. But mom, I cleaned up my side. I don't know why. You're not fussing at her. She didn't clean her side. A lot of times we got to be concerned about what we're doing. Figure out what your life is. The point of this passage is about making Jesus and his word your first priority. Today, we come to know Jesus better through prayer, church attendance, and Bible study. And then here, all of the 12 apostles and some of the women who supported Jesus' ministry was traveling with him. Fixing the meals would have been a major job. Martha, like many hostesses, become anxious over impressing her guests. Martha has been compared to the apostle Peter. Practical, impulsive, and short-tempered. To the point of rebuking the Lord himself, Mary is more like the Apostle John. Reflective, loving, and calm. So you want to have a spirit of being calm, of reflecting or meditating, and being a loving individual. Martha was more concerned with Mary coming to help her instead of her just doing her own thing. There is something powerful that we're going to have in the kitchen. One of the most important ministries that really gets shunned away. The kitchen ministry is one of the most important ministries. Jay Lee, I want you to get up from there and come sit right here. Carl, will you please allow Jay Lee to come by? Thank you, dear. Now, Here's what I want to say about Martha. She's so concerned about what Mary is doing instead of doing this. Paying attention and listening to the word as she is working. Many of us get really, really distracted with things, especially we're like, but mom, we really, really want to go to the kitchen, but... You know, we're still sitting down, and we really need to be in the kitchen. Guess what we're going to have in the kitchen? We're going to have a TV, and we're going to have a nice speaker, so that those that have to go into the kitchen, they'll still be able to be part of church. So many times we get sidetracked to say, but... But, but, but we have to go over here, Mother, but, but you don't understand. I want to sit and listen to the Word of God. And I need to be in the kitchen, though, preparing. And your ministry is more important than you even think it is. Know why? Because we all have to have nourishment. And if you learn to prepare and do things in the kitchen the way you're supposed to, you will have, we'll always have time to listen. 
you'll always even have time to watch. We're even going to have a some type of modem set in there, like a TV, so that people will be able to see what's going on in the church. And not just the, the speaker, but the whole entire church. We're going to put it to the back so that if you want to see uh, Sister Lump Lump uh, uh, get a... Um, Get one of those. Get the catch the Holy Spirit. You'll you'll watch her catch the Holy Spirit. You know if you want to see Mister and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Know It All and Earl come in with her big hat, you'll be able to see it. You know whatever person that you may say, oh I wish I would have seen Sister Boo Boo. She looks so cute every single Sunday. You'll be able to see it even in another ministry. So we must focus on this, and I'm leaving you all with this. The, this thought. Go home and reflect on what is it that is distracting you. What is it that is taking your time away from God and get rid of it. Get rid of it. I'm going to say a general prayer for everyone as we are going out. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful time, this wonderful, magnificent time that we've had in you. Lord God, you said in your most magnificent word, Lord, that... For us to have your wisdom is we must learn to fear you. So we honor you and we respect you, Lord. Also, Lord God, to stay, to stay away from evil things, to shun away from evil is the best way. It's your understanding, Father. As Job chapter 28, verse 27 and 28 said to us. So we thank you and we love you. Lord God, we also pray for each and every person that's out there in the live stream, Lord. Those that are going through some troubles, people that are going through health issues, we cancel the assignment of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare the peace of mind and heart under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you left your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we can become better people. We also ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke any sicknesses, diseases, and illness. For you said in your word that no sickness or disease shall lord over our bodies. Lord God, we declare and decree the freedom that comes from Jesus Christ. For he said he has called us his friends, Lord. So we want to thank you. We also pray for all of the young people in the, in the live stream, the young people that is gathered here, that they are focused and they pay attention. That they learn to honor and respect and love their parents where they'll learn to just be quiet. When their parents tell them something, just be quiet and listen. For we know that you gave us two ears so that we can listen and focus on you. You said in your word that we must be slow to speak and we must be quick to hear. Also, Father, we bind up any spirit of confusion, distraction, misunderstandings. We bind up and we destroy the spirit of anger. We cast it to the abyss where it belongs. We destroy it with the Holy Ghost power. Any man, boy, girl that is up against your future, up against your destiny, up against anything that is coming ahead of your righteousness. We cancel the assignment right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, Lord God, to bless us with the works of our hands. Bless us, God, giving us the witty ideas to create the wealth that we need. Discipline us, Father God. Help us and correct us, Lord, as we're going into our consecration time for 90 days starting in the morning. We ask you, Lord God, for your strength, Father. For it is only in you that we have our strength and have our being. We ask you, God, to help us to understand your word more. Help us to be more diligent with time also, Father. We ask you to help us during this time of 90 days for us to give you our troubles, our fears, our worries, our anxieties. So that we can destroy those things under the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to take every imagination and every wicked thing that tries to exalt itself. And we cancel it and put it under your feet, Jesus. We cancel those assignments right now. We ask for the peace, the love, the joy, the understanding. 
the wisdom that comes from you that's more profitable than silver, gold, and rubies. We ask you, Lord God, to give us the good, compassionate hearts and understanding hearts to help one another. We also thank you, Lord God, for the life, the health, and the strength that you have given to each and every individual. This prayer we give to you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. This has been our platform of Kingslands Ministries, Freedom Street Ministries. We thank you for joining us today. We are friends of God. We're servants of God. And we love you guys, and we send peace and blessings out to everyone.